All right, now in this video, what I want to do is take a look at, I think the main objective is to connect our backend API uh, endpoint to our view front end. And uh, yeah, I also want to do some refactoring. I think I want to clear out all of these stuff that are here, or at least most of them. And I want to get rid of this hash symbol here, uh, which is pretty simple and uh we'll see how that goes so if i should uh do clear this out and refresh i think it should come back uh yeah so you can see it there so now we we'll fix that so what we have to do is it's pretty simple what we have to do is go to the router.js file or draw to that index.js file and just add another option to this thing so right here we can just go to mode and uh, we're gonna have a history mode and uh, that should do the trick so the hash was the thing that we was used way back when you are uh, just started or whatever and that should do the trick uh, once this is reloaded, I have the servers uh, already up. So if I should go there now, I'm gonna refresh. We're gonna still see the hash in there, but when I clear this out now, we should not see any hash uh, symbol anymore. And that is just pretty much how uh, we can fix that issue. It's pretty, pretty simple. What I think I had not in uh I'd fix that on the installation but i guess i didn't uh another thing that i realized is that view if i and it's it's not something that i watch a conference one of the view conference and uh young lady was saying that uh the view is kind of heavy it's a very heavy css framework especially it's component based so when when we're loading like when we're just running the npm uh, run serve it's kind of takes a while you can see that it, it, it's there loading everything so i don't know probably i'll have to like look at some alternatives maybe not in this series but uh, i want like ui kit is very lightweight uh, that's why i like it and also tailwind css but i'm not highly familiar with it so yeah so let's move on to uh the next thing which is uh what am i going to do now i'm gonna clear some of these stuff out of here because we don't we don't really need them this hello world component here uh yeah i'm just gonna get rid of this file because we don't need this really don't need that and uh, only if we get rid of this we're gonna have to go to the app file because that that's being imported in in there so that should be gone yes and in here in the app file we're already in there and I cleared the the, the UI, not the UI kit, uh, Axios uh, that we, what we had used to connect to that server. So I cleared that. So this is what we want to get rid of. And uh, this here. So that should now be fine. And also want to get rid of this. Uh, we can leave the component uh, hook or whatever here. It's fine. Or we could get rid of it because obviously it might start making uh screaming at us or whatever. The nav bar is okay. The app the app bar is, is okay, I assume for now. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's cool for you now. Let me see the reloading. So, uh, 
it should I, th I thought it would have picked it up but i guess it did not probably gonna have to run the server again because i guess it reloaded before beforehand so let's see what what's gonna happen now In the meantime that is reloading then what i want to do is to go ahead and uh, do our connection to the api so right here i think right here in here that i could just put a user so yeah and it's pretty simple i could get rid of this as well and even this divider so we won't really need it anymore unless we're gonna well the footer will be different so we don't have to worry about that uh in here i could just go ahead and say user and have it as null for now and further on maybe in the video if i consider uh looking at vuex then we'll have some i'll show you some better way of, of doing this and it so that it doesn't have to load every time you uh, go on, on a certain page. So I want to use a created hook this time, and on created, I'm gonna have to import Axios. So import Axios from. I'm gonna use the double quote before that thing starts in at night. Axios from Axios, and uh, I want to say Axios, and I want to do a dot get, dot, dot, dot get, and basically all we have to do is just put in that URL. So we're gonna say HTTP localhost uh, port a thousand slash API slash users, and uh, that should. Well, this should be users then. If that's the case. So if we want one user, then I guess after we can. Well, it should work from now. We could just say like users and have the the key uh to be the ID or whatever that we want it to be. But for now, I'm just gonna get all the users and then we're going to draw that. Uh, that then. Then uh, the response will be, uh, I think this is how it was mapped to the response. No, that's not it. It's gonna be uh, mapped to this dot uh, users is equal to response dot data. I think that's it. Or response, I don't know. I don't remember how it's gonna come, but I think that response is is good. So yeah, that should work. And then if we had an error, we could do a dot catch, and uh, probably could have something like error, and we could do like an alert or no, I'm gonna do console dot log, and then we can log. this then we can log uh something like double quotes here quotes and error and we could also just put this in there and it would work i could just put just for a more descriptive uh whatever and just uh save that and once we save that if everything is if everything is, is is as done correctly then we should get the user information and all the other stuff that are not supposed to be here will be gone let me just check the home component just to see or the home view just to see oh here we go so this we don't want this that's one this is another thing that we don't want this is why it was given the issue it didn't need to reload that was why it was given the issue so i want to get rid of this and you can see they, they they're telling us that that the at is equal to the source folder so it's gonna bring us right here uh in nox we can use the tilde so this thing here or dot will work just the same i get rid of this as well and uh the 
let me just get rid of the whole before the enemy left. Okay, it's cool. So that's about that. Let me see in the about us page or about page. All right, so that's fine. So we don't have to worry about that. And uh, yeah, let's see if this has compiled. Almost there. In the meantime, what else can we do in here? And I want to show. Uh, let Let me see. As you can see, it's beautify that is still loading, and that's uh issue that I'm having with this thing at this moment. So I don't know. It just takes a, a whole lot of time to do that, and I don't like that. So I'm gonna consider some other options with all that slowness. But let's wait on it to uh, finish compile. All right, so now that that is finished, we have a small issue here, an error here, which is this, and uh, I'm just gonna get rid of it because I'm not gonna attempt to fix it right now. So I'm gonna leave that as is, and that's gonna save, and uh, yeah, it's reload, so we don't really need to worry about that. All right, there we go. So if I now go over to the browser and uh, should automatically, I don't know something, I guess something is up with the hat reload. But if I'm just gonna re refresh this right now, probably because I just restarted the server. So if I now refresh this, we should see that the changes in the refresh screen reflected. So you can see that all of the, all of the, uh, the code that was up here is gone, but I don't see the information, so I'm just gonna uh, gonna open the view dev tools, and you can see that uh, here, and I'm gonna look if on that component if if the information actually came in. But before I do that, uh, what I wanna do, I'm gonna refresh this. And upon created creating this thing, there should be uh the request should have been sent here, and we would be we will be able to see the request if it if it came in. So you can see that the U it was sent. Uh, well, it, it, the the request went out, but there was an issue. Oh, there we go. So now it now it's loading. I don't know what happened before, but now it is actually loading. So you can now see that we got the response from our API. So that's our backend API. We now uh, have gotten our response. So that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. So at least we know that our stuff is working, and we can see. The request that was sent it was no request but we can see the response that we got back all of this data from the database and this is yeah and this is yeah the database so if uh if i should take this url here and uh i'll copy in okay and i go and i open a new browser window here and just paste oh I paste the wrong thing. So let me just go to localhost uh, 8000 slash API slash users, and then we we should see uh, we should see our uh, information here. And that thing that I did that I, I don't remember if I if I shown is that. I commented out some information. I don't remember if I showed it or if I undid it. So in the router and in the web that um that PHP, all of all of this information I commented this out. And the reason why I commented this out is because this is mainly for 
uh, the views on a backend. So if we were just using Laravel, uh, just Laravel on its own, then we we would use the web routes. But because we are using an API, using it as an API, then all we will need is this API folder. So if you're following along, then you can just go ahead and comment those out. And uh, that's about it. Uh, if I if I should go to uh, just here, then we will get a 404 error that the page is not found because it's it's really looking for uh, one of these routes. So that's why where is that? It's really looking for one of these this route here, but but it's not being found because we commented it out. And yeah, so that's about that. So you can see we get a 404 error, but the API is still uh working on all and you can see that we're actually getting the correct data so this is what is in uh, the database and we can also go ahead and look in the database as well if uh whatever so if we just go to php my admin all right so now we'll just go over to the management system database then to users, then you can see that this is the user that we uh, pull from the database name, admin, uh, admin at email.com. And those are just the basic information that are there for that user. Same thing that we have here. That is pretty much it for uh, this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.